Hey everyone, my name is Royce and I'm a first year MD PhD student at UPenn. In this video I'm going to be talking about my new Apple Watch Series 6 that I got earlier this year. I'm going to be talking about my reasons for getting the Apple Watch, some use cases for it, and whether or not you as a college or medical student should look into getting an Apple Watch for yourself. Let's get started. First let's talk about my motivation for getting the watch. I started with a G-Shock digital watch. I used this watch for timekeeping purposes only and it was really good at that. I got this Apple Watch as a gift. I heard from friends and family before that it was really useful. So I came from having a very not smart watch to a very smart watch. The Apple Watch is one of those things where you don't need to get a new one every year. Part of that is that there are only incremental improvements with each version. It's not like the Series 5 to Series 6 is this huge jump in improvement, only in price. I ended up getting the Series 6 Apple Watch with a 44 millimeter screen, and this costs $429. Uh, the Series 6 has a few more features over the Series SE. One of them is the blood oxygen sensor that detects the percentage oxygen saturation of the hemoglobin in your blood. There's the ECG app, or the electrocardiogram app, and there's also the always on retina display. So I'm gonna start with my first use case, that is emails and texts and other communications. So just as some background, I've used my iPhone. This is the iPhone 7 Plus, or 7S Plus, I'm not too sure. I would use it to send texts using Siri. And uh, you know, I'm very used to that. And so uh, with the Apple Watch, you can send texts. Text Jackie, so excited for tonight. Exclamation point. Exclamation point, exclamation point. They also have a functionality where you can like write letters um, and spell out stuff, but that is honestly like really slow and impractical. But yeah, sending text with Siri is really easy, especially if you're used to vocalizing punctuation. Checking emails is really nice too, so I get buzzed. It might be lab related, it might be medical school related, uh, and you can mark the email as read, and so you don't get a second notification when you go back on your laptop and you see the very same email. Uh, but one thing to note is that I use Outlook for email, that's what my pen medicine email is uh, based on, and so sometimes you just can't read the whole email, which is um, a little inconvenient, but it, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. Now I'm gonna talk about the second use case, which is health and wellness. So I'm sure that many of you watching this video know that with the Apple Watch, you can close your rings. So your Apple Watch keeps track of three rings. One is calories, two is time spent exercising, and three is time spent standing. And uh, you can set goals for yourself, and uh, it resets every day, and you can you know, set the goal for yourself to close the rings. And uh, for me, honestly, you know, I, I go to the gym every day, um, working out, lifting weights, or uh, playing basketball, it can also be really nice to get that reminder throughout the day to um, you know, close your rings and to you know, go to the gym if you haven't already or go on, on a walk or a bike ride. So the Apple Watch is a really great way for me to keep up my active lifestyle. And like I said before, the Series 6 has the blood oxygen sensor, which the SE does not have. Honestly, I think the sensor is kind of a gimmick. Um, normal readings should be, you know, upper 90%, so 95 to 99%. But sometimes I get readings that's like 85%, and I'm like, there's no way. And I think part of that comes from the fact that, you know, blood O2 is typically measured from your fingertip, and um, they're trying to measure it from your wrist. Uh, you know, I think it's pretty neat, but, um, you know, of course, the situation may be very different if you're someone who has, for example, COPD and needs to monitor that value. Another thing that I really like about the Apple Watch is the breathe function. So breathe will give you notifications throughout the day to you know, stop what you're doing and take a few breaths of meditation. Uh, you know, I'm a very big proponent of meditation and I'm such a believer of meditation and its health benefits that I'll probably make videos about meditation in the future, so stay tuned. Uh, but a lot of times I forget to practice meditation and mindfulness and having a, a gentle reminder during the day can be really nice. Okay, so another use case is alarms. So I use the bedtime app a lot with my iPhone and the Apple Watch synchronizes with the iPhone well. I can get notifications on my watch that'll tell me to go to sleep soon and I'll also get an alarm if I set it in the morning to wake up at whatever time I set. So the Apple Watch alarm can be a vibration with no sound. And that's really nice because I can wake up with my alarm without having to wake up my fiance who sleeps right next to me. Now I'm gonna talk about another use case which is music and audiobooks. So I use AirPod Pros to listen to music and to listen to audiobooks. And AirPod Pros don't have the functionality to toggle volume. So with the Apple Watch, I can very easily tune the volume of the audio with the wheel on the side. And I can also choose to skip to the next song, go back a song. I can also choose to go forward or back 15 seconds in my audiobook, which is really nice in case I miss something, uh, you know, as I'm biking. The battery life of the Apple Watch Series 6 is actually really nice. 
I only find myself needing to charge it once every two days. And I can usually charge it while I shower. Uh, I think it takes about an hour to fully charge from zero. So the Apple Watch, at least the newest version, does not have any issues with battery life. Like I said before, much of the things you can do on your Apple Watch, you can do on your phone too. So my opinion is that, yes, the Apple Watch is really nice. If you had $400 lying around and you have to choose between buying an Apple Watch or putting that money towards a new laptop or a new phone, I would definitely consider putting it towards the new laptop or phone because that is so much more important than having this minor improvement in quality of life. But of course, you can always go down the route of getting an older version or a used one that'll cost much less and will have pretty much the same functionality. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks and I'll see you later.